Today, we will talk about the airport traffic pattern. Basically, a traffic pattern consists of a series of predefined trajectories intended to organize VFR traffic departing from or arriving at an airport. As we can see, the pattern is composed of five legs, forming a rectangular shape around the runway. Now, we have to mention that there is more than one pattern for a particular runway, so to identify each one of them, we use as reference the runway where takeoff and landing are performed. For example, given this runway, we have the traffic pattern for runway 09, which would be used when takeoffs and landings are performed in that direction. While on the other hand, we also have the traffic pattern for runway 27, which would be used when takeoffs and landings are performed in this other direction. Now, we also have to say that for a particular runway in use, we can fly two different patterns, one making all the turns to the left, or the other one making them all to the right. However, we will look at this later on. Let's focus first on the different legs or segments of the pattern. The key thing to keep in mind here is that the legs of the pattern are named according to their position relative to the wind direction. So, for naming purposes, we always assume a direct headwind for the runway in use, since normally takeoff and landing are performed against the wind. So according to this, if we will analyze the legs of the pattern for runway 09, then we assume a direct headwind for this runway. With this, the first leg after takeoff is known as the departure leg, or in some cases, the upwind leg. Then, we have the crosswind leg, the downwind leg, the base leg. And finally, we have the final leg, which basically coincides with the approach path of the runway in use. Now, in some countries and under certain regulations, there is an additional leg, which is identified as the upwind leg. As we can see, this one is parallel to the departure leg, and in theory, it would be used in case of a go-around to avoid conflicts with other departing aircraft. Or, it could also be used by arriving traffic to join the pattern from this direction. However, in practice, it is not so common to use this leg, and that's why sometimes there is confusion between the departure and upwind legs. So, having seen a general overview of the traffic pattern, let's now take a closer look at each of the legs and some rules of thumb to fly them correctly. So let's start with the departure leg. As we already know, this is the first leg of the pattern after takeoff, so the main objective here is to gain altitude before making any turn or maneuver. Therefore, the runway heading is maintained until a specified height above the airport level is reached. This height is normally between 400 and 500 feet, but it may vary depending on different factors such as the aircraft type, terrain, obstacles, etc. So, once the aircraft has reached a safe height, it starts a 90-degree turn to the crosswind leg. In this leg, the aircraft continues to climb while maintaining a heading perpendicular to the runway. This heading is maintained until it is deemed necessary to turn to the downwind leg which typically for light aircraft, corresponds to a distance of approximately one nautical mile. However, this value may vary depending on several factors, such as local procedures, type of aircraft, or terrain characteristics. Then, after making another 90-degree turn, the aircraft starts the downwind leg. Here, a heading parallel to the runway is maintained, but in the opposite direction. And typically by this time, the aircraft would have reached the pattern altitude, which is normally 1,000 feet above the airport level. So this leg is flown leveled at that altitude, and staying approximately one nautical mile off the runway centerline. Now, this heading is maintained until the aircraft reaches a key position that is at a 45-degree angle in relation to the runway threshold, as we can see in this image. It is at this point where the aircraft would start the turn to the base leg. Now, before going to the base leg, let's talk about the pattern altitude. This is the altitude at which the pattern will be performed, and as already mentioned, it is normally 1,000 feet above the airport level. So for example, if the airport elevation is 3,000 feet, then the pattern altitude would be 4,000 feet. However, we have to say that this pattern altitude may vary depending on terrain characteristics, obstacles, local procedures, or aircraft type. 
So, with this being said, let's go back to the key position at 45 degrees in relation to the threshold, since it is normally here where the aircraft would start the turn to the base leg. Here, a heading perpendicular to the runway is maintained while descending to intercept the approach path. This heading is maintained until it is deemed necessary to turn to final and align the aircraft with the runway. Here is where the aircraft starts the final leg at about 500 feet above the airport level. However, this height may vary depending on the distance to the runway and the pilot's judgment. In this leg, the runway centerline is maintained while descending on the approach path until the aircraft lands, executes a go-around, or executes a touch-and-go landing. So with this, we have already seen in detail each of the legs of the pattern. Here we have a summary of all the information and parameters used to fly the pattern. And in this other image, we can see a 3D representation of the pattern, in this case, for runway 36. Now, here we can see that this is a left-hand traffic pattern. And the thing is that, as we mentioned previously, we can fly either a left pattern or a right pattern for a particular runway. With this in mind, in a standard traffic pattern all the turns are made to the left, hence the name, left-hand pattern. While on the other hand, in a non-standard traffic pattern, all the turns are made to the right, hence the name, right-hand pattern. Now, in order to differentiate the legs of these two patterns, most of the legs of the right-hand pattern will be identified with the word right at the beginning, as we can see in this example. This way, when talking to ATC, or when stating the intentions through the radio at an uncontrolled airport, there is no ambiguity, and everyone will know with certainty which leg of the pattern is being referred to. Here we can see a 3D representation of a right-hand pattern for runway 36. Now, we have to remember that each runway, by default, has a left and right patterns. For example, let's say that the runway in use here is 09. In this case then, we can observe the left and right patterns for runway 09. However, if the runway in use is 27, then it would also have its own left and right patterns, which are completely different from the runway 09 patterns. For this reason, it's really important to mention the runway in relation to which the pattern is being flown, to avoid misunderstandings. So, now that we know all the important stuff related to the traffic pattern, let's move on to how to enter and exit a pattern. Well, as a general rule, when arriving at an airport, VFR aircraft must join the pattern by one of its legs and then proceed with the landing. And in the same way, when departing from an airport, VFR traffic must leave the pattern by one of its legs, depending on the direction they want to continue their flight. Now, in order to increase safety and avoid potential conflicts with other traffic, there are some recommended techniques to take into account when entering or exiting a pattern, and these are. If possible, enter and leave the pattern leveled at the pattern altitude. When entering the pattern, if possible, join the downwind leg at an angle of 45 degrees. And when leaving the pattern, if possible, leave the downwind or crosswind leg at an angle of 45 degrees. All these procedures facilitates observation and detection of other traffic in the pattern to prevent collisions. However, it should be noted that it is not mandatory to follow these techniques. Now we will see some situations where the use of these pattern entry and exit techniques will be shown. For example, let's say that this aircraft is coming from this direction and wants to enter the left-hand pattern for runway 09. So according to the recommended techniques, the procedure could be to descend to pattern altitude, cross over the airport and join the downwind leg at an angle of 45 degrees. However, another option is to descend to pattern altitude plus 500 feet, cross over the airport and fly for approximately 2 nautical miles, which is twice the pattern distance, then make a right turn while descending to pattern altitude to join the downwind leg at an angle of 45 degrees. This second procedure is a little bit more tricky, but allows the pilot to look for other traffic in the pattern from above, before joining it. In this other situation, let's say that the aircraft is coming from this direction and wants to join the right-hand pattern for runway 09. Here, the procedure could be to descend to pattern altitude, cross over the airport, 
and directly join the right downwind at an angle of 45 degrees. In this other example, let's say that the aircraft is about to take off from runway 09 and wants to proceed to the White Cross. This way, the procedure could be to climb on runway heading until reaching a safe height and then leave the crosswind leg at a 45 degree angle. Now, if for example, the aircraft wants to proceed to this other white cross, then the procedure could be to fly the pattern normally and then leave the downwind leg at a 45 degree angle. So as we can see, there are many different ways to join or leave the pattern. However, the exact procedure to be executed will depend on things like the ATC instructions, local procedures and restrictions, terrain and obstacles, air traffic density, airport layout, airspace structures, among other factors. Now, talking about procedures and ATC instructions, there are some maneuvers that can be executed in the pattern depending on the situation. For example, in order to properly sequence and manage traffic on the pattern, ATC may request an aircraft to extend a particular leg, or even the pilot can make the decision to do so. The most common extension is the extension of the downwind leg, where the aircraft flies a longer than normal downwind, which leads to a longer than normal final, as we can see here. Another example is the extension of the departure leg, which implies flying on runway heading for a longer distance, and then eventually turning for crosswind. Now, in the same way that we can extend a leg, we can also shorten it. The most common procedure is to make a short base, which implies turning to base earlier than normal, which will lead to a shorter than normal final as well. Now, another common procedure is to make a 360, which consists of making a 360 degree turn at a standard rate of turn of 3 degrees per second, which means that the whole maneuver should take about 2 minutes. Normally, ATC will indicate the direction of the turn. However, if this is not specified, the standard 360 is made by the left. Now, another similar maneuver is an orbit, also known as a visual holding. It consists of making continuous 360-degree turns over a certain area until ATC tells the aircraft to stop. However, in essence, the way the turns are made is exactly the same as with the 360. Now, a final thing to keep in mind is that when flying in the pattern, especially at unfamiliar airports, it is important to use headings as a reference for each leg. Let's see how to do it. According to this chart for example, the heading of the runway 04 is 037. So using this information, we can start adding or subtracting 90 degrees from this heading in order to figure out the heading for each leg of the pattern and make it easier to fly, as we can see here. I hope the information presented in this video was useful. If so, don't forget to share, like, subscribe, and leave a comment down below. Thanks for watching.